Yeah, uh, thank you for the, uh, thank you, John, for the intro, uh, introduction, and uh, thank, thank everyone for coming. Uh, and I'm glad to uh, talk about um, our recent work on Fermi surface symmetric mass generation. Uh, this this work is in collaboration with uh, Meng, Meng Zeng uh, and Yi Zhuang from UC San Diego, and also Zhu Wen from Harvard CMSA. Um, and this work will, uh, sorry, this talk will be, uh, basically based on this uh, this archive paper uh, we posted in October, and uh, many many informations or many uh, other examples are in the uh, like this uh, uh, Meng Zeng's paper and also the review by Zhu Wen and Yi Zhuang. Uh, okay, so. So first of all, the symmetric mass generation may be a very novel terminology for most of us. And uh, I will give an introduction of the symmetric mass generation. What does this mean? And uh, uh, this, this notion uh, have a strong relate, relation to the uh, interaction reduced classification of uh, SPT. So I will introduce uh, uh, like the construction from uh, interacting SPT to get the uh, SMG phase. Um, to, to discuss the symmetric mass generation of Fermi liquid, uh, I need to introduce what's the symmetry of the Fermi liquid and then give the two examples, one is in 1D and another is in 2D. So uh, maybe uh, uh, the symmetry I will talk about is this loop, loop group symmetry. And finally, I will give the uh, conclusion and uh, for the future directions. Uh, yeah, this is a Carol seminar, so feel free to interrupt me with any questions. And I think maybe some terminologies are very new, so you can uh, ask me to define that. All right, so first is uh, first is about the uh, what the each term means. Okay, in plain words, the symmetric mass generation basically means that uh, we have to preserve certain anomaly free symmetry, uh, such as time reversal symmetry, charge con conservation symmetry, and maybe even Carroll symmetry uh, for the fermion system. And we want to say whether the fermion will acquire mass or not. So, to, to say whether the fermion are massive, uh, one can see it from the energy gap in, in energy momentum dispersion. Uh, are there a question? Okay. Uh, but this is a free fermion picture. So th this may not work in the interaction uh, in the system with strongly uh, interacting. Uh, so we we usually use the second uh, uh, second picture which has a correlation function, two point, a fermion two-point correlation function has this exponential decay and the correlation length defines the mass. So this corresponds to the many-body excitation gap. And uh, uh, the generation means that uh, this is a dynamical process. So we need to tune the specific interaction to strong coupling limit and uh, then drive the system to gap space without creating any uh, fermion bilinear condensations. Uh, and maybe one kinematic constraint is that the total phenomenon of the global symmetry must vanish. Uh, that's our, maybe the first uh, thing to check whether the system is anomaly free or non-anomalous. Okay. Um, Okay, this SMG is actually not a, a new terminology, but uh, it dates back to uh, when people want to put the Carroll fermion on lattice. Uh, and the, this is an old dream because the standard model is a Carroll theory and the left-handed and right-handed fermions uh, do not create, a, uh, create equally. So maybe we can see here it's only one dispersion but this is not true when you put the fermion on the lattice because uh, due to the dispersion, like the, this cosine function, uh, the left move, mover always comes, sorry, the left mover always comes with the right mover. And one way to uh, 
to get the terraforming on lattice is introduced by uh, Ashton uh, Presque in uh, 1986 is to use the interaction to leave the uh, one mover, uh, one mover, uh, sorry, one maybe chirality of fermion uh, without breaking symmetry and cons uh, consistent with the uh, normally constraints. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, SM SMG, um, and uh, it's realized the carol fermion in the lattice model by engineer the interactions to get gap out the uh, gap out uh, the half we don't want. Um, but how does this happen? We need to have a way to design the interaction. And uh, maybe the next uh, few uh, pages I will discuss how to design this interaction. Okay. And there's one way to uh, realize Carofermion as the boundary of one higher dimensional theory, like the one plus one D Carol fermion, the boundary of two plus one D transcendent theory. So this can you can see the Carol fermion on the quantum Hall uh, edge. But in this simulation, uh, it is costful because uh, if we want to simulate the the standard model, then we need to use a five dimensional bulk. Then it's very uh, costful. Okay, uh, are there questions so far? Um, okay, uh, okay, this is, uh, uh, here comes to the um, very important picture of the symmetry protected topological phases, which we want to use this as a, a basic picture to help us uh, design the interaction that gap out the gapless fermion. So the SPT are characterized by their non-trivial boundary balls. Uh, we can say this is a Madrona chain, a single Madrona chain, and each circle uh, corresponds to a set, and the set contains two Madrona fermions. In the trivial phase, uh, in the trivial phase, the Madrona chain doesn't have any uh, gapless modes, but in the non-trivial phase, it has dangling Majorana zero mode on the boundary. And this gapless uh, boundary modes cannot be lifted if, if we have to preserve certain symmetry, for example, the time reversal symmetry. And in higher dimension, the boundary of SPT could be gapless, spontaneous symmetry breaking, or topological order. Um, and the boundary theory have the total anomaly, which is canceled by the bulk SPT. Uh, the gapless age is usually the relativistic gapless fermion, such as the Dirac fermion, well fermion, or Madrona fermion. And the Fermi surface in this case, in this case is a point. Uh, I want to uh, discuss this SPT because uh, SPT uh, gives us a natural, back, a natural ground to have a, a to have a gapless fermion respect some, some symmetry. So next, uh, we want to say maybe, uh, can, we get, can we introduce the interaction to gap, uh, to gap out the gapless modes on the boundary, at the boundary? And the answer is yes. So Fidgowski, Kitab, you, you, uh, introduced the interaction to gap, uh, to gap out the the dangling modes uh, in eight Madrona chains. So if you have eight copies of the Madrona chains, then you can introduce the four fermion interaction to gap out the dangling Madrona zero modes uh, without breaking the time reversal symmetry. Uh, the time reversal symmetry is uh, uh, is t squared equals to one. Oh yeah, I, I will introduce that later. Um, and actually, this gives uh, uh, in other perspective, uh, the free fermion classification is reduced by the interaction, and uh, it's reduced from the Z classification to the A classification. So you, if you don't don't have any interaction, then you take any copy of of the Majorana chain, you 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 can see it's a different 
uh, as PT phase. But if you introduce the interaction, the eight copies of the Majorana chain will, will become uh, the trivial, uh, it's, it's equivalent to the trivial phase. So this, uh, this fitkowski kitayev interaction, it's the very first example of uh, using interaction to gap out uh, the uh, gapless modes without breaking any symmetry. Yeah, here's a table from the uh, cobalism calculation. We can check the table, for example, the T-square equals one case, the Z uh, reduced to the Z8 classification. And maybe in the 4D, it's reduced to the Z16 classification. Um, okay. And how does this uh, interacting SPT connect to the SMG? So uh, for example, in this figure, uh, we can have several layers of SPT such that the normally uh, uh, such that such that the, the the for example eight copies of marginal chain is e equivalent to the trivial trivial uh, trivial phase. So in this case, we can introduce the interaction to gap out the mirror sector and leave the light sector uh, intact. So the light sector still have gapless modes. But the mirror sector is gapped out. Then we create the the Carroll fermion in one direction, uh, moving in one direction. So the punchline is that uh, we have maybe two constraints. One is the uh, uh, kinematic constraints that the mirror sector should be anomaly free, and the second is the dynamical uh, constraint that the inter interaction needs to be properly designed such that it will not generate any fermion bilinear condensations and therefore preserve the symmetry. Um, in other words, the interaction should satisfy the certain gapping condition. Uh, and this gapping condition in 1 plus 1 D uh, is studied by uh, Zhu and uh, Xiaogang. Uh, in 2013, and I, I will discuss this later in the example. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, maybe the general uh, guideline to construct the SMG, SMG system. We need the symmetry to be anomaly free and res restrictive enough to rule out all the fermion bilinear terms. Um, okay, yeah, the anomaly free condition essentially means that the bulk SPT is trivial. So actually we, we can just uh, ignore the, uh, the bulk, uh, only focus on the boundary theory and investigate the gapping condition. So in the fitkowski kitai ex example, uh, this is the time reversal symmetry that acts on the fermion. So it takes the imaginary to, to the conjugate and uh, uh, all sets fermion to negative, have a negative set, but it will not change the uh, fermion on the even set. The eight Madrona uh, chain is, uh, is anomaly free. Uh, this is a picture. But since, it, since it's anomaly free, we can actually ignore the bulk. Then we can only focus on the a dangling Madrona, Madrona zero mode. And, and if with the uh, time reversal symmetry, no bilinear term can be added. For example, if you get, if you add the term like I chi one, I chi one, chi two, let me write down. I chi one, chi two. Then based on the, uh, the, the one, two are referred to the first layer and the second layer. And the, uh, when referring to the this time reversal symmetry, it will have a negative sign. So this is uh, forbidden. So this time reversal symmetry forbids uh, all the bilinear term, but the full fermion interaction can be added. And in the strongly uh, coupled minute, uh, limit, the full fermion interaction will drive the eight Majorana zero modes to the unique ground state. This is uh, 
symmetric mass generation. Um, and this picture applies to higher dimensional gapless relativistic Dirac fermion, a well fermion or Madrona fermion as well. Um, but uh, we want to generalize this understanding to other system, even with the uh, finite density. Um, to this point, uh, are there questions? Okay, that's it. That's the, no question. Let's continue. Uh, so why, why do we want to study uh, the system with finite density? Because this may relate to the strongly correlated materials, usually in the like in the cuprate superconductors, or maybe relate to the charge 4E superconductivity. And also some recent development in the deconfined uh, Fermi surface, uh, like the Fermi surface reconstruction. Uh, this example actually has a, has a normally. Uh, I will discuss later. So, um, but it has some uh, relevance to the uh, to the experiments. Okay, here's the the outline of the uh, the rest of the talk. So, can this understanding be generalized to the system with finite density? Uh, what's the what is the protecting symmetry, and uh, how can the Symmetric interaction gap out the system without generating fermion bilinear condensations. Yeah, so we basically will answer these questions in this 1D example and 2D example. Uh, then, then we have the conclusion. So, so first uh, is uh, 1D. So uh, in 1 plus 1D, the Fermi surface consists just uh, two Fermi points. Actually, it's uh, it's directly relates to the uh, understanding of Dirac fermion and uh, other relativistic fermions. So we can e easily generalize the uh, zero, zero density to finite density in one plus one D. Uh, let's maybe take this uh, example, take, take this model as an example. So it's it's a very, uh, this, 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 Three four five zero basically means the charge assignment of the fermions travel along the edge. So, for example, if we we say the H A, there are four fermions uh, travel two travel up and two travel down, with the U one charge assigned to uh, assigned as three four five zero, and there's also a U one prime symmetry has the charge zero five uh, for three. Why is this number? Because uh, um, the normally is cancelled. Because uh, if you take the triangle, like with the three, four as the edge perpendicular to each other, and the five as uh, the other edge, then you get uh, get this equation. Uh, this means that the total normally of the u one cross u one prime symmetry uh, is is free. And because the two travel, uh, two fermions travel up and two travels down, so the gravitational anomaly also cancels out. So this is a perfect system um, to to have a SMG uh, to possibly have a SMG. And to only have the Kelvin kind of fermion, one needs to add proper interaction to gap out the. Uh, for example, HB without uh, uh, breaking symmetry and with HA in intact. Um, as a uh, result in, 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 this, in this two paper, uh, in this paper and uh, numerically confirmed in uh, this paper, there is a six fermion interaction uh, needs to be added to this, uh, to HB. And this, this, uh, six fermion uh, interaction. Um, okay. Yeah, the crucial part to design this interaction uh, that symmetrically gap out the H, H, sorry, HB. Uh, this uh, this can be analyzed with analyzed without the bulk because it's a normally free, so we can ignore the 
the train insulator and HA, just leave the HB. Um, and in the following, in the following, we will only fo focus on the HB. Um, actually, uh, let's see. In the in the numerical calculation, they construct the the whole system and add the interaction to HB. But for the purpose of the uh, symmetric mass generation, we can only take the HB as as only takes the HB. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a comment to the, uh, in chat. Yeah, right, in, in one plus one, it's not, I'm not saying it's a triangle diagram. I think, yeah, it's just a, a, a Schwinger diagram, a two point, a two point function for one plus one D anomaly. Uh, in three plus one D, it's a triangle, triangle diagram. Yeah, thanks for the point. Um, okay. And let, let's see what we can get from the uh, study HB. So maybe maybe I need to introduce the symmetry of the Fermi surface in, in the one plus one D system. So in the low energy, the left Fermi and the right Fermi are independent and they have separate U1 conservation symmetry. So they can rotate uh, in different angles. And these two U1s can combine to get the uh, U1 vector and the U1 axle symmetry. I think this is more familiar, familiar with, uh, more familiar to the uh, field theory audience. Um, but there's also a, 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 a perspective that this symmetry can emerge from the lattice symmetry. So the Karch conservation charge conservation U1 symmetry will become the U1 V symmetry and the translation symmetry will become the uh, U1 A symmetry in the infrared limit. Um, but uh, because the translation symmetry actually acts on uh, in a non-onset way, means that it's, uh, uh, it will permute the lattice site so it actually has the Toho phenomenon uh, between these two symmetry. I will discuss this more later. And, uh, and we uh, at least uh, the symmetry transformation here. So the U1V is just the uh, ordinary uh, charge conservation symmetry and the translation symmetry um, acts the left mover and right mover with different phase angle. This corresponds to the uh, Fermi point whether it's a uh, minus KF or KF. Uh, and it's, uh, it's parametrized by the translation, the amount of the translation, delta X. Um, okay, and then let, let's talk about the anomaly of this, uh, this two symmetry. So in the, uh, I just uh, copy this two symmetry uh, and it has a mixed anomaly, but uh, the anomaly uh, can be characterized by this uh, uh, this failing. It's actually related to the failing of the uh, of this system. So it's uh, the charge times the uh, uh, this is U one V charge times with the Fermi point and minus this uh, charge times the uh, Fermi point. So the, the formula is related to the failing of the uh, one plus one D fermion chain. So it's a consequence of the uh, LSM theorem, means that if you if your failing is not integer, then uh, you cannot have a gap phase. The, sy the system must be gapless. So in order to get a get a symmetrically uh, gap phase, we need this anomaly be canceled means that the failing should be uh, zero. So for multiple bands, uh, the anomaly free condition is sum over all the uh, charge times the Fermi points. It should be equals to zero. Yes, so the way to understand this uh, 
the low energy theory has mixed tautonomy is because the uh, uh, UV lattice translation symmetry acts in a non onset way. And uh, this should be matched with the uh, uh, IR U, U1 symmetry. Um, this understanding generalized to higher dimension. So in a similar, situa a similar situation happens in the 2 plus 1D deconfined quantum critical point, where the translations, uh, where the lattice rotation symmetry uh, acts on, uh, acts in a non, sorry, acts in an non onset way. And uh, uh, it will emerge as the as the U1 rot uh, U1 internal symmetry or Z4 rotation, uh, Z4 internal symmetry with the total of anomaly in the in the field theory. Can can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so this this quantity that you say characterizes the anomaly. This uh, I this think you called it two nu on the previous slide, two pi nu. Uh, so what you mean by that is that that's the coefficient of some term in the effective action after coupling to background fields for U1 V and the translations. Is that the right uh, way to think about it? Th this mu is uh, it's just the density of the uh, field uh, band. Right, but when you say that it characterizes the anomaly, uh -huh. is, is what, is what oh, you yeah. mean by that? That it appears as the coefficient in a term in the effective, effective action? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, right. This U1V and U1A can combine to, uh, if you think in the bulk, uh, so, okay, so this is one plus one D system. And if you uh, want to cal cal calculate the anomaly, uh, the anomaly that should be in two plus one D. And this relates to the mixed transam term between the U1V gauge connection and U1A connection. I understand it in the, in the field theory limit as just mm -hmm. the ordinary chiral anomaly, but... Uh -huh. I, thinking about it in terms of translations is a little harder for me um, because I guess you need the connection to the to the density to think you need to think about it as translations to understand the connection to the density, right? Oh yes, um, that's the part I'm struggling with. Uh huh. Um, oh, in the U, you mean in the U V limit? What to how to understand this anomaly? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah, I think there are some arguments about the flux writing. So, uh, so the translation defect basically is a single site, right? If you have a translation defect, it means you miss a site. <laughs> and then that site will carry a certain charge of global U1, which is the amount of charge is proportional to the filling mu, because on average, you have this much fermion on every site. So if you miss a site, then you lose this much of fermion. But that's basically the global charge captured by the translation defect on the UV level. Thanks. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Yidron, for the comment. And thanks, thanks for the question. Right, yeah. I think I in this two plus one D equal CP uh, case, then the uh, VBS defect has the the core carries the like the spin degree of freedom. Then that's another mixed anomaly uh, in the DQCP. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Next, we can uh, construct the one plus one D lattice model of the three, four, five, zero model. Uh, he, yeah, here this last model only accounts for the HB. Uh, and let, let me introduce this model. So it's, uh, you can see there are two fermions. One is uh, 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 labeled by A and B and the charges are uh, one and three. Uh, they are, they are um, how's it? Uh, they are designed as this such that uh, the combined, there is a combined symmetry, U1 symmetry. If we combine the U1V and U1A in this way, uh, then we get another two U1 symmetry. And therefore, the fermion carries the, uh, the charge as the as field theory model, uh, 3450. 
um yeah so basically we need to first uh uh first uh, assign the charge for u1 v symmetry and then uh puts the fermion on different uh, fermi points uh, gets the u1a charge the u1a corresponds to the uh translation symmetry so it's uh related to the how how do you place the fermion on the uh in the brown zone um yeah this is a this is a free model and we need to in, introduce the interaction to gap out the system without breaking this uh this symmetry uh the interaction turns out to be in this uh six fermion form that we can say uh here i i draw three points uh if we annihilate the b fermion on set i uh the interaction will create another two b fermion on the left side and right side and uh, the interaction also annihilates all the a fermion on this set and plus the Hermitian conjugate. In the low energy, uh, in the low energy field theory, this this interaction directly relates to this uh, uh, this interaction given in the uh, given in the theory paper and the, and numerically confirmed in in the MRG. Um, but let's see why why this will happen. Oh, okay. So here is the uh, some uh, calculation about this uh, six fermion uh, interaction. At the low uh, small coupling limit, it's a free fermion. Uh, sorry, the the free fermion. Uh, you can count the scaling dimension, and it's this six fermion interaction is very irrelevant. But when you turn uh, turn the coupling to a, to to strong enough, then this interaction will have scaling dimension less than two, which means that it becomes relevant. And uh, this is another phase diagram uh, of this uh, six fermion interaction. So the delta int is the scaling dimension of the uh, of this interaction term, and uh, g is the coupling constant. Okay, so yeah, maybe if uh, from a uh, field theory perspective, uh, people usually ignore the very irrelevant interaction. Um, but here, this example shows that uh, the str strong enough interaction will drive the system to uh, to another fixed point. And to see why this uh, interaction will work, uh, let's bosonize this theory. And this uh, six fermion uh, interaction correspond to this uh, this charge vector. Um, and this uh, yeah, so we have we have two terms g one g two. Uh, in the calculation, we actually impose a reflection symmetry such as such that j one equals to equals to g g g two. And these two charge vector, uh, they are actually mutual boson. Uh, they they do not have tri uh, non-trivial breedings. So if you calculate the uh, phase angle of uh, breeding these two uh, charge vector, then it will give you zero phase. And these two charge vector also are self boson, means that uh, it uh, rotates maybe thirty six. Uh, 330 degrees, and it will get get to back to your, itself without any phase. This understanding is from maybe from the topological order. Uh, if you want to get the gap boundary condition of the of a topological order, then you need to condense all the mutual boson and the uh, self boson. If you condense this mutual boson and self boson, then any uh, any other ions that uh, uh, breed non-trivially with this uh, these particles then will be uh, gapped out. So in this case, all the fermions uh, breed non-trivially with these two charge vectors. So they are uh, so all the fermions will be gapped out. Uh, maybe. 
in other words, uh, we need to find uh, the maximum um, mutual boson and self boson and condense them. Therefore, all the other degrees of freedom are gapped out. So in this case, we turn on the uh, G1 and G2 to, uh, to strong enough and to condense this to charge vector and all the fermion operators that breathe non-trivially with these two charge vectors will be gap out. Uh, are there questions? Yeah, so if we have the, uh, if we turn this interaction to large enough, then the system will enter the SMG phase with uh, all fermion excitation uh, gap out and without breaking the uh, U1 cross. Uh, this Z is translation symmetry and Z2 is uh, re reflection symmetry. Um, yeah, this con concludes the uh, one plus one D example. Uh, are there questions? So did you get the RG flow diagram perturbatively by field theory? Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the Latin Latin liquid uh, theory calculation. So basically, but if the interaction is non perturbative how do you trust this theory framework? Uh, let's see. Uh, Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, in general, we we can first uh, take the interaction to strong coupling limit, and then find the uh, many body excitation, uh, many body spectrum of the uh, of the system, and we can in that limit confirm there is a gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this phase diagram, uh. I think it's but I more... think for three four five zero model, the strong interaction limit is no not exact solvable. So we still we, we, we don't have analytic control in that limit. I think one does question is about perturbative RG. I think the way, way to view that is to look at the SMG transition, that fixed point. That fixed point is that G goes to zero, and then the RG can basically control the flow surrounding this fixed point. Of course, too far away from this fixed point, it's not it's not controlled perturbatively. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. So maybe this GC is not uh, quite uh, controllable, mm -hmm. but at this transition point is. Uh, Maybe we can trust the perturbative calculation. Yeah, if you look at this diagram carefully enough, this GC value doesn't match the lattice. Yeah. Value. So that reflects the fact that it's not controllable uh, as it goes larger. Right. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, so, how to understand the condensation of the vector uh, next that the vector? The both uh, the both on L one and L two, which don't break the symmetry. Oh, uh, this L one and L two don't uh, doesn't break the symmetry because uh, uh, okay. So maybe we can go back to this interaction, and you can see that if if you count the charge, uh, uh, comes the U one charge of this this six fermion interaction, it will. Uh, actually trans transform as a singlet. Uh, I mean, the charge is zero uh, under the U1 cross U1 symmetry. Okay, so, so we just want the condensation of this boson to, to keep other fermion not condensate. Um, the, this L1, uh, L1 and L2 are just uh, both on that personalization of this six fermion interaction, G1, G2. Um, so th that should satisfy the symmetry constraint. It's, it should be symmetric. And uh, the way to uh, to say why it, why it gaps out all the fermion is because that if you calculate the, so the fermion operator corresponds to, uh, 
equals e to the i by i. So maybe uh, the first formula is uh, the charge vector is one zero zero zero, and and if you calculate the breathing phase of this fermion with the L1, uh, then it's maybe actually one or I think it's one. So it's not zero. Therefore, it, it breathes non-trivially with uh, this L1 and L2. So the fermion will be gap out. I think the question is more about like uh, conventionally in the superfluid phase, if you condense a boson and enter the superfluid phase, and then you break the U1 symmetry of boson conservation, right? So uh -huh. here we also condense some boson and then we're not breaking the U1 symmetry. That sounds very weird, but it is all because this U1 symmetry charge is assigned as 3450. The, sim the system actually has four different U1 symmetries. We are not going to preserve any one of them. Uh, every one of them, we are only going to preserve two of the four U1 symmetries. Of course, this condensation of boson will break the other two U1, but it doesn't break the two remaining U1, which we wish to conserve, which is the U1 symmetry that correspond to the total charge conservation of the original fermions and the lattice translation symmetry that we mentioned previously in the lattice model. The other U1 is not our concern. We don't care. And of course, this boson condensation will break some other U1, but not the U1 we care about. Yeah. So why why the this two U two U1 symmetry is special is that for our question? Yeah, at the at the Lattinger liquid level, you don't see any special, right? Uh, the, there are four boson modes, and then every every U1 symmetry seems to be on equal footing. But you need to remember that this model is coming from the original fermion system, where the fermion system would define the total charge conservation of these A and B type of fermions and translation. Those are the only symmetries we wish to preserve. And then we are not going to preserve more than that. So that's the, that's the idea, yeah. If you, if you want to preserve the four different U1, which correspond to every Fermi point, there is a separate fermion number conservation. So with that, then the system is anomalous. And then if the system is anomalous, it, it, it violates the condition for SMG to happen. So you cannot gap out the Fermi surface in that case because of your anomaly. So you have to sacrifice some U1 to lift the anom to cancel the anomaly. And then, and then you can do this, can see this phenomenon. Yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for the question and thank you don't for clarify. Um, um, I yes. guess also ask uh, a question. Sorry. Um, I think this may be a very dumb question, but I uh, earlier you mentioned that. Um, um, at least in some models, I mean, at, at least one way to get the two U1 symmetries that one of them in the UV is a translation symmetry, which becomes some kind of U1 symmetry in the low energy, right? The earlier the example by Shinji yeah. at all. So, mm -hmm. but in but in in your model, there's in the lattice model you are studying, there is also a translation symmetry. Yes. So does that play any role? That translation symmetry in your lattice model does it have does it have at low energy? I mean, yeah. I, this becomes this. U1. Okay, that is all. Okay, that's all right. That is coming from the translation. Even yeah, in your this translation. comes from the translation. Okay, yeah. Not like there's some it, additional. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we need to carefully put the fermion on the uh, Fermi points such that. No, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Sure, sure. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, right. So, uh, yeah, we need first to specify what symmetry we need. We want to like preserve and then design the model. Uh, uh, and and then start uh, study what symmetric interaction can gap out the system without break any symmetry. <laughs> Yeah, right. So this U1V comes from the charge conservation symmetry, and this U1A comes from the translation symmetry. And uh, this two U1 combine to give the different Carroll U1 symmetry.
Okay. Uh, if there are no further question, uh, I will discuss the uh, 2D example. Um, yeah, so in, in the 2D example, uh, the Fermi surface is actually can be viewed as a collection of uh, 1D Fermi liquid. So that's that's why this general generalization can be uh, can be achieved. Uh, let's first talk about the symmetry of the Fermi surface. So, uh, sorry, uh, maybe more specifically, it's about the Landau Fermi liquid. Uh, the Landau Fermi li liquid is robust against uh, uh, interactions. Only the forward channel can uh, dress the fermion mass, and the fermions on the Fermi surface. Uh, have the loop U1 symmetry. This is a, basically a fancy name to say that it's a charge con, con, uh, the charge are conserved. Uh, so yes, here is a Fermi surface and it's labeled by a uh, by an angle. Uh, the fermion at each point uh, transform uh, transform to have this phase. And this phi theta is a is a periodic function. Uh, with periodicity two pi, so the loop loop u one is a collection of function that maps a, a circle to this u one group. So given any uh, periodic function, and you can exponential i this function to get the element in the loop u one group. And we we can note that the charge conservation symmetry and the translation symmetry are the subgroups of this loop U1 group. The ordinary charge conservation U1 symmetry is just uh, uh, you take the phi theta to be a constant function, like Q, Q times the constant, then uh, it is certainly a periodic function and, and uh, it's a subgroup of the loop U1 symmetry, a loop U1 group. And the translation symmetry uh, acts so uh, translates the uh, uh, the C fermion with this phase angle depending on the uh, translation uh, vector and also the for, uh, for Fermi momentum. Are there a question? Um, so it's also a periodic function and uh, inside this loop, loop U1 group. Uh, if we so in the following, we will focus on this uh, charge conservation and the translation symmetry. Uh, these two symmetry as seen one plus one D example also have a, a mixed anomaly between these two symmetry. Uh, uh, and, uh -huh. I have a question about the about the, the U1 symmetry. How can we know the system have this symmetry? And uh, uh, I think the Loop U1 symmetry may be more larger than these two subgroup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, that's true. I I think I'm not fully understand uh, uh, how to say the uh, how to say the whole loop U1 uh, physically. Um, but if the fermion are conserved at each point. Then it's certainly so. So so for example, you can you can you can have the arbitrary C uh, C theta goes to E i phi theta C theta with this phi theta to be a like a very discrete and uh, I mean at at uh, the fermion on on each point of the Fermi surface. Are separately conserved, so they can rotate by different phase. So uh, in this case, so the, the phi theta in this case is not a continuous function. It's a uh, you can think about arbitrary distribution of these numbers. But if we take it to be continuous, then it corresponds to this loop U one group. Basically, basically says that the Fermi on the Fermi surface. Uh, conserved on the on each point. Can I ask you a question about your notation? Um, uh -huh. Is c theta a function of space? A uh, c theta is only this theta. No, no, no. But the operator c sub theta. 
Is it just a single mode or should I? A oh, single it, mode. Is it a one-dimensional field? It's one-dimensional field, yeah. But that's not the same answer. <laughs> no, it's only, I mean, here right, is so, the mode. So, but that they, doesn't, yeah. but it um, it's a function of space, right? Yes. So doesn't the translation also act on its argument? Uh, um, I think that's true. If it is a function of space, translation also acts on argument, but it doesn't stop you <laughs> to also <laughs> implement its, its internal rotation, right? Translation acts both as translation and internal face rotation in this way. My understanding is that you're you're writing the whole field, like C of X, as some uh, sum over um, points on the Fermi surface of a field that's sort of associated with that neighborhood of the Fermi surface. Is that is that right? Right, L right. Like you did in one plus one dimensions. Right. Um, yeah, I guess I'm still a little confused about the the step by which the translations become a completely internal. But, but, but if you are not comfortable, maybe it's better to think of it as a mode, <laughs> as a as a precisely the mode on the Fermi surface. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm also yeah. confused about the same point. It, you can't do probably both things. I mean, it can't be that you that the the space dependence part of translation is what is becoming the face eventually, right after coarse graining. Mm -hmm. You you can't I mean for example in the in, in the 1D case you have this plus minus sign that you probably there were there were two Fermi points you are not like then translating all souls I mean maybe you are are you talking about translation in some orthogonal direction or I don't know but suddenly in the 1D case the c, c theta goes to e to the power plus minus i kf c theta right mm -hmm. theta is plus theta is just theta take two values plus mm -hmm. minus one, if you like so um. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it makes sense to do both things. Just, you're just yeah, so there, to there is a momentum cutoff scale. <laughs> you have to regularize this. Uh, like uh, uh, if you're if the amount of translation is much larger than this momentum cutoff, then it basically acts on the as x as a field is translated. But if the amount of translation is smaller than one over the <laughs> momentum cutoff, then it basically becomes an internal phase rotation. So, yeah, yeah. I'm only thinking of the second case. Yeah. So it's uh, that you should set once you set the momentum cutoff scale, then you can compare the amount of translation with that one over momentum cutoff scale. Then that will that will branch you to the two different cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my understanding. And re regarding this loop U1 symmetry, maybe I can comment that it's only an emergent uh, symmetry at low energy, and it is a symmetry of the Landau Fermi liquid theory. And if you write down the, if we write down Hamiltonians of Landau Fermi liquid theory, amazingly, this Hamiltonian only contains the number operator of fermions. It's uh, even if you start with a fermion with hopping and C dagger C, but you see it's Landau Fermi liquid theory only has to do with the number operators. So that means the theory has an emergent, has an enlarged symmetry, and that enlarged symmetry is a separate conservation of fermion number at every point on the Fermi surface and that uh, by Sento and people just conclude that as uh, loop U1. And the reason it is not U1 to the infinite power is because every mode doesn't have a quantized U1 charge. It is the it is only a U1 density. So, so that's why you need to use loop U1 uh, to describe this Fermi surface emergent symmetry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, right. Yeah, I think yeah, I may I may be not quite understand this uh, translation. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the clar uh, clarification. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, similar to the one uh, D case. 
um, these two symmetries have the have the mixed anomaly characterized by this by the failing. Um, and if the if the failing is uh, not quantized, then then the Fermi surface cannot be uh, gap out. Uh, otherwise, it will be uh, it will develop some topological order or uh, or gapless. And the Fermi surface uh, SMG only possible if this uh, failing is uh, is quantized. And for example, we can have multiple Fermi surface uh, and such that the total failing it's uh, it's quantized and the normally cancels and here is a a, a toy model we we we, we constructed uh, there are two type of two types of fermion uh, a fermion is on the kagami lattice uh, in the, uh, the blue kagami lattice and has charge one a b fermion uh, hop on the triangle lattice with charge three so we need to uh, tune the chemical potential such that the failing uh, satisfies this relation and the anomaly vanishes. Um, notice that the, uh, this, this charge assignment and the translation symmetry together are restrictive enough to forbid uh, any fermion bilinear condensations, such as you, don't, you cannot have charge density wave because it breaks the translation symmetry, and you cannot have superconductivity because it breaks the uh, the U1 con uh, charge conservation symmetry. Um, and the, this this two figure are some uh, you can this only one relation, so you can tune mu a or uh, mu a to different failing. Uh, this is uh, the second. Uh, this C, C figure is a special case that you can have several Van Hoff singularity on the Fermi surface uh, on the uh, in the Brayon loop. And the symmetric interaction we uh, we engineered is uh, is this four Fermi interaction that it creates a, a B fermion and annihilates the three uh, A fermion uh, in this uh, unicell. This interaction can be solved exactly in the large interaction limit. Um, the different unicell, uh, the, the whole ground state can be constructed uh, by, you, by tensor product of the uh, ground state in, e, in each unicell. And this P characterizes the, the failing. Uh, it's dependent on the chemical potential of, uh, of the A fermion and the B fermion. Uh, this ground state has a uh, have a finite uh, energy uh, energy gap scale with with the interaction strength G. Oh, so the one 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 zero means that this, there are three A fermion and no B fermion, and zero 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 one means there's only there's one B fermion in, in unit cell. Um, okay. So in this, uh, the strong G limits, uh, another point maybe, the strong G limit, we can see that uh, it actually becomes uh, atomic insulator because uh, each unit cell are just product, uh, the ground state is a product state. Um, this, is, uh, this can be possible because the norm is, is free. Okay, so next we analyze the SMG transition from the free fermion limit to the uh, to the SMG phase, SMG gap phase. Uh, certainly, there are different ground states, and we can analyze the transition between these two. Uh, so we take this very special feeling, such as there are three one hope singularities uh, 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 in in this Fermi surface. And uh, uh, after some calculation, we find that there are only these three uh, interact, uh, these four interactions uh, that can flow to each other. The first figure shows the dense density interaction. Uh, so the thin line, thin arrow, corresponds to the A fermion because it only ca uh, carries charge charge one, and the 
the thick line, uh, thick arrow corresponds to the B fermion with charge three. So uh, the the blue and the red correspond to types of the dense density interaction, and uh, the um, this yellow and the green correspond to the uh, the special SMG interaction. Uh, for, for example, here's annihilate a B fermion and then create three A fermion. Uh, same as this uh, green one, but it uh, carries some momentum transform. And the, this is a one loop RG equation. We can solve it uh, uh, exactly. Uh, and here is a phase diagram of this, uh, this model. So we have the Fermi liquid uh, in the right upper corner, and we can find the SMG phase uh, in this region. And there's a mysterious region <laughs> corresponds what one types of the uh, SMG interaction goes to zero, and uh, another momentum transferred SMG interaction goes to infinity, which is actually uh, we haven't figured out what this phase is. Um, and another thing we can calculate is about the SMG gap. It scales with uh, um, scales as this form and uh, depends on the, the the strength of the dense density density interaction as well as the uh, dense Fermi dense the density of state. Um, okay. Can you say a little bit about how reliable we should expect this hotspot RG to be? Oh yeah, so uh, right. Uh, I think, yeah, I think maybe one one thing about this space diagram is that maybe this is the artifacts of the hotspot RG. Um, but uh, we tune this chemical potential to have uh, to have the Fermi surface have some my hope singularities. Therefore, the density of states uh, mainly localized at this uh, uh, my hope singularities. So in, in, if, if the age doesn't contribute too much, then uh, we can use this hotspot RG. That, that's the whole question, right? So do, yeah. There's still a Fermi surface elsewhere, right? Why doesn't yeah. it matter? Um, yeah, right. But the Fermi surface uh, scales, um, so the density of state does, does not diverge, goes to uh, lo low low energy. Yeah, that's certainly we can improve using the, for example, FRG or uh, other other RG method to uh, capture all the Fermi surface. At this special point where there are Van Hove singularities, wouldn't you express, wouldn't you expect that the bilinear instabilities are also large? Uh, but they are forbidden by the symmetry. Yeah, but um, and uh, yeah, and 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 if you if this uh, I mean, so we cannot decompose the interaction to fermion by linear. So, sorry, sorry. What I mean is, wouldn't you expect four four fermion interactions? that lead to such spontaneous condensates to also uh -huh. be important. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I think we cannot rule out this possibility. It's um I it's not a it's not a completely satisfying uh computation, but that's what we can do so far. <laughs> it's uh it basically my argument is like that, like this. So we checked that when G goes to infinity model is exact solvable and it, we know the ground state and it doesn't break any symmetry. Okay, then we go to the RG uh, where we don't have the full control of every Fermi point on the Fermi surface, but at least we focus on this Van Hoff singularity. There's an indication that this RG equation has a flow where both these uh, two types of this uh, SMG interaction both flows to infinity. If this flow to infinity just just we can't control that once it flows away. But if it does flow to one single fixed point, and that fixed point should correspond 
to the fixed point where we analyze by the lattice model. So probably that means there's no intermediate phase. Then the, the, across this phase transition, we end up with the other phase. But because it's not a reliable, full con, con, fully controlled com, computation, so there's still open, uh, it's still open to the possibility that there might be some symmetry breaking intermediate phase we don't know. Yeah. Thanks, I see the logic. Uh -huh. Does the model have a sign problem? Sorry, that's I don't know. I, I think so, it has from your surface. Uh, but um, but sometimes that's... when you have nested Fermi surface, you don't. Sometimes there are cases where uh -huh. there's a sign problem with nesting. Yeah. Yeah, but but this is not like uh, usually nested is like there's a particle and whole pockets that coincide. Here it's almost like a particle and particle pocket coincide. It's uh, both 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 fermions is uh, three quarter filling basically. I'm not sure. I don't even know how to do quantum Monte Carlo decomposition <laughs> at which channel, which bilinear channel is more reasonable to decompose into. Yeah, in this case. Mm. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the four fermion interaction is very <laughs> kind of strange because the charge is uh, three and one. So the decomposition may be some linear combination of uh, density and uh, pairing term. Yeah. So it's possible uh, to cut the Fermi surface into patches and use the 1D Lattinger liquid to analyze. I mean, the, the 1D Lattinger liquid RG to analyze the behavior. Yeah, I think it's possible. <laughs> Yeah, because the Fermi surface, you can see it's very, you, you can all, either view it as different of uh, one whole singularities, or view it as different age, and that, then the age corresponds to the Carol Fermi. Yeah, actually, try that. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I, I tried that approach, and then uh, uh, it turns out that uh, not all uh, degrees of freedom can actually be gapped. So there are still gapless modes. Not very okay. successful. We, we, yeah. we haven't fully figured out why. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of a, a, a demonstration of this SMG in Fermi surface. And there are more to explore in the in the future. Uh, uh, I have a question about uh, for you see that the symmetry will protect the, the uh, will, will need it for the system, but could we have the spontaneous symmetry breaking such? Uh-huh, yeah, uh, I think this, yeah, this related to the, to John's question. Uh, since we can, uh, in the large G limit, to find the ground state which is uh, which is symmetric, on uh, in 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 all the symmetry, and if we in the R G uh, in the R G calculation can find the root from the Fermi liquid to this S M G phase, then we maybe we can expect uh, this root connects, but we cannot rule out other routes to uh, SSB phase, for example. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least uh, in this phase diagram, we can get the Fermi liquid to SMG uh, direct transition. Um, yeah, and here's a conclusion. So, the Fermi surface SMG uh, form in uh, for in this tree. Um, so the Fermi liquid, if you preserve the loop U1, 
then you you can have a more broad uh, like the symmetric Fermi surface reconstruction. Uh, this is discussed in, for example, the orthogonal metal uh, and other for Fermi surface with gauge field like the deconfined Fermi liquid uh, theory. If if the anomaly is uh, is present, uh, it's present. Uh, but if it's a normally free, then uh, we can get the Fermi surface as Mg. And uh, the future directions, uh, for example, in most uh, SMG phase, uh, the the Fermi, the Fermi, uh, how say, the poles of the green function uh, are replaced by the zeros. So if you calculate the uh, the two point correlation functions. You will find the zeros uh, at this at the, at the position where the post lives. Um, yeah, and we can explore some more experimentally relevant system, such as the pseudo gap in cuprate steel connectors, uh, and maybe explore explore other protecting symmetry uh, of like loop G and G can be other groups. And and understanding other system uh, gapping conditions for the uh, other system or higher dimensional system. Yeah, I think that that's all. Yes, yeah, thank you for for your attention, and and the questions. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. Any questions and comments? Sure. Uh, I have a question about before you say to keep the symmetry of loop U1, you have to fine tuning the the chemical potential or the fielding factor. So, um, if so for the environment, may I, I don't know if it is if it is not fine tuning, could we get this solution get this phase or not? Um, you mean in the experiment, how do we realize this uh, this failing? Mm, yes. Yeah, I think there are several. Maybe, yeah, there are se several ways they can they can scan the failing. Uh, for example, at the gate voltage, you can tune the gate voltage to get different failing and maybe dope the system with other compounds. Uh, uh, yeah. So is it stable? Because I just think, think that if the chemical potential is less, slightly away from this, uh, this value, could it be uh -huh. also able to get this phase or not? Um, in terms of chemical potential, yes, because SMG is a gapped phase, just like MOT insulator. And this technique is also used in like Moray super lattice, like twisted by layer graphene, right? People need to apply gate voltage to scan through the feelings in order to see different kinds of MOT insulator, band insulator, and different phenomena. So we expect that there may be materials where you can scan through. I, I think the most weird assignment is this charge assignment, <laughs> one over three charge assignment. But uh, I'm maybe less worried about feeling because you can tune the chemical potential maybe through. I see. Yeah. Actually, this charge, U1 charge here shouldn't be, I think, shouldn't be considered as the electric charge because electron only carry charge one. It should be maybe related to some other internal charge of the electron, some internal symmetry. Maybe as SU4, sub, <laughs> this, this charge U1 can be the subgroup, diagonal subgroup of, uh, of SU4 such that you may have uh, this kind of assignment. Yeah. Then you can still use the global U1 to tune the chemical potential. Yeah. So, so the charge three, this particle may should not be the electron, or it yeah, I be don't want to think in that way. Actually, <laughs> although we present in our paper, we didn't make that comment. 
but I suppose it should be some SU4 subgroup. That's other way. Otherwise, I couldn't think about how to <laughs> realize a U1 <laughs> symmetry which has three over one ratio. But I actually let me make a uh, like maybe there's a next week, right? Uh, uh, Biao Lian is going to give a, a condensed matter seminar talk in Wednesday. And he's going to talk about precisely this interaction, annihilate three fermions and create one fermion. And this has a very important consequence in the study of quantum breakdown. When you have like a breakdown, a high electrode voltage, and then one charge will hit something and split into three charges. So he studied those problems and he found that this interaction can lead to interesting phenomena of localization, Hilbert space fractionalization, and things like that. Fra fragmentation, I mean. So, so I think um, it's not unreasonable, maybe nowadays, since Biolian's work, <laughs> to think about these weird uh, three, three fermion into one fermion kind of interaction. Yeah. Uh, but I really consider this as a subgroup of SU4 symmetry. Yeah. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, John, you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask, um, in, in higher dimensions, even in the case of um, just n direct nodes rather than a whole Fermi surface, do we understand yet the conditions on the interactions to fully gap out? the direct points? Not, not quite, I think. I, I, I think Juven has some understanding, but I, I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Is that, I, I think that seems like an easier question than the analogous yeah, question yeah, for Fermi surfaces. Yeah. yeah. It may relate it to like a higher categories and try to understand the uh, like what you do, right? Using this bootstrap, understanding strings and point like uh, topological excitation, how they braid with each other. Because this gapping condition essentially is braiding trivial condition for uh, for for the bulk topological order. You, if you treat this fermion as boundary of certain bulk. And then uh, essentially, because we don't have a full understanding on that side, so <laughs> probably we, we, we are still uh, uh, far, maybe <laughs> we still have a distance from solving this gapping condition. <laughs> mm. Thanks. Yeah, Taran, you have a comment? Yeah, I'm, I'm confused about something that I, I don't know. I, I feel I um, should know the answer, but so if I go back to the main um, our original argument for this um, SMG of of Fermi surface, um, you're looking at anomaly between translation and uh, and local uh, the material to, to 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 the to the charge conservation. So it's a uh, um, and um, so generally the argument goes okay. So that um, the reason we can gap out a Fermi surface uh, with superconductivity is because you have broken the symmetry, which is entering this anomaly. So you you don't have any then constraint, so so that's why superconductors can be gapped at any filling. That's a very interesting comment. Actually, the classification is Z two. <laughs> when you break loop U one to Z two, the classification is Z two, which means super even with superconductivity, you need two species of the fermion, upspin and the downspin, to get a fully oh. Fermi surface. You can't have a single species of fermion and use superconductivity to gap out the Fermi surface. You can't even do that. <laughs> so, so, so even if you choose to break symmetry from U1 down to Z2, there's still anomaly constraints. I see. But, but, but uh, if you prefer U1, the classification is Z. So, so you have to cancel the anomaly precisely. Right, right. I think that, yeah, but my question is something slightly different. But yeah, uh -huh. I, I want to understand your comment. But my question was about, um, so but instead of, let's say, breaking the uh, charge conservation spontaneously, suppose I break the translation somehow spontaneously, mm -hmm. but I, at, 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 a, at a generic filling, then mm -hmm. as far as we know, you don't gap out anything. You always remain gapless. Oh, that, that, so, that is because you haven't fully maybe canceled the, 
loop U1. I, I mean, yeah. loop U1 is a very large group. Mm -hmm. Translation is only part of it. Yeah. So we need to, yeah, you can say, oh, I break translation. Then, then loop U1 still remains pretty much a lot of group. Elements. But then, uh, so what is left over? Suppose I break translation fully and have, how does one characterize that anomaly in some compact way, the leftover anomaly? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a, mm, so currently, Mm. So that's a physical case, like disorder metals or. Oh, if you have disorder, then. Uh, okay, yeah, I can I can consider both cases as spontaneous breaking, sorry, or or explicit breaking of of of, of, of translation. But in both cases, we don't know how to get a gap Fermi surface while preserving the U one. And un un unless unless there's nesting, right? Unless there's certain. Perfectness. Yeah, but I'm asking about generic filling, the generic filling. Yeah, with general shape of the Fermi surface, I think trans tr translation breaking is not e enough. And then you can see translation essentially correspond to a P wave kind of uh, phi, phi of theta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this phi of theta function, it's like a P wave mode. And U1 is like a S wave mode. Mm -hmm. And then you can classify this mode by angular momentum. Mm -hmm. So so it goes mm -hmm. on and on. This U loop U1 actually contains U1 conservation mm -hmm. for all different momentums, essentially. So mm -hmm. So if you break translation, there's still next next one is D wave, right? <laughs> there's still a D wave conservation of U1, and with maybe that still have anomaly with the total U1. Uh, I think that's I maybe true. Yeah, it's like KF square and KF third, right? I think when you have perfect nesting, then situation can be different. Certain angular momentum has certain relations, which I don't know. Uh, if you don't have this general assumption of for example, if you have a square of Fermi surface, there's only C4 symmetry, maybe angular momentum truncate at a certain level, then maybe you can have some nesting induced gapping by canceling all these loop U1 anomaly. But if you have a circular Fermi surface, you have angular momentum all the way to infinite, right? And then uh, you need to consider U1, loop U1 kind of a symmetry associated with every angular momentum component. And, um, that it's the higher angular momentum conservation may still uh, impose uh, constraints on gapping, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't fully thought out the details, but I feel there's some, some physics like that there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somehow, this is very different than your previous example, where the symmetry was not emergent. It was coming, I mean, the, there was an analog of symmetry in the UV also, like the trans. The previous yeah, example, yeah, 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 yeah. you had it was not so much emerging. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. We 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 talk about U one and translation, but actually loop U one much larger than that. And then U one and translation is just two symmetry we can understand. <laughs> and there are also other high angular momentum modes U one symmetry which we don't quite. I mean, it's not obvious what kind of lattice symmetry leads to those U uh, one conservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so, 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 so even a superconductor has, I guess. Yeah, has uh, large has, symmetry. Yeah, uh, it has essentially becomes a classification problem. So we want to ask, so given the symmetry being loop group of something can be, uh, can be loop U1 or can be, however, I don't want to call it loop Z2 because uh, with, if you break, charge U1 down to Z2. You haven't break translation yet, right? So translation is still acts like a U1 symmetry. So it is, so I look up Wikipedia, this loop group has two version. One is pointed, the other is unpointed. And then uh, this, uh, you can say, the, the, this loop is unpointed loop, but unpointed is like the U1 symmetry cross the pointed loop. Uh, uh, loop. I'm not so. Can you say a bit more? What do you mean by pointed and pointed? Pointed is uh, whether you ping the phi of theta at zero to a certain value. 
<laughs> so you can so you can require so this loop u1 is any e to the i phi of theta where phi of theta is a continuous function currently that's the only requirement but you can say okay phi of theta is a constant plus uh 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 uh, uh uh, sorry, constant plus a periodic function where the periodic function has has a point which is pinned, like, like a phi of zero must be zero, something like that. I, I think mathematically it can be make more rigorous. But then you can say that it is the constant part that is broken down to Z2. The, the non-constant part, the, the, the pointed uh, loop group is still there. Mm -hmm. so, the, so with superconductivity, the symmetry group is Z2 cross the pointed loop group. Mm -hmm. And then the question becomes, if you have a fermionic system with such a symmetry, what's the classification? How to classify anomaly of these uh, mm -hmm. systems? So, sorry, Yishuan, I'm confused about the abstract statement you made, because uh -huh. if I have a single spinless fermion with a Fermi surface, can't I make a nodeless P wave superconductor? that will break certain angular momentum type of U1, maybe. Is that? But but I didn't think we were demanding that symmetry. Oh. It seems like it's translation invariant. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I need to think about it more. Yeah, I maybe I should take back that comment. Uh, it it seems like an interesting problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting to understand better these loop symmetries and their corresponding classification. <clears throat> I mean, even if it's like a P plus IP superconductor, right? I think that's your <laughs> what you are thinking about. Yeah. You pairing between fermion of opposite momentum. And then it actually, this pairing actually still breaks. Uh, I think it breaks something more. Like uh, you, if, if you can do independent U1 rotation on the Fermi surface, uh, so suppose if you consider like uh, this uh, angular momentum two kind of U1 transformation, this pairing is not invariant under that transformation because the D wave kind of, if you have uh, two fermions both uh, across like opposite to the Fermi surface, both rotate by the same angle mm -hmm. under D wave type of U1. That's right. So the pairing can break maybe more symmetry than maybe we think. So maybe we should think more careful about what's the remaining symmetry and then try to give that a reasonable classification. Right. Uh, it's, it's maybe, yeah, I think that's the right idea. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, is there any further questions? So uh, if not, then let's think that one again. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Dashwan. Thank you. Bye. Have see you see you next week. Maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Um, are you doing uh, uh -huh. when is Ruben's talk? Ruben's talk is the uh, week after next week. Okay. So next week is Biolian's talk. And tomorrow there is no talk. Tomorrow there's no talk. Tomorrow is empty. Okay. Because I thought I tomorrow know. was when stock and we never announced it or something. I was just worried. Ah, oh, oh, oh. yeah. I think that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, Ruben is giving the Wednesday seminar. Yes. Yes. Uh, December the seventh. Oh, great.
and yin chen is giving our next week's talk on tuesday yes yes great confirm all yeah stuff which mm -hmm. right and after that zamor is giving his talk the following tuesday <laughs>